Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2020 release In Search of Darkness Part 2, and it's a Shudder exclusive coming to Shudder on Thursday, April 26th. Now, because of that, I'm putting this review out ahead of that. It will be a no-spoiler review, and um, yeah, I mean, it's a documentary. There's not really much to know. It's a very long documentary, and I will say off the bat, if you were a fan of the first In Search of Darkness, you're definitely going to like this this second one because it's a lot of the same types of things, even though they cover a lot different films and some other topics. And yeah, so but if you like the first one, it's set up the same. It's the same type of deal. So if you love that one or like that one, definitely watch this one. And if you haven't seen the first one, definitely see the first one and then see this one. I don't think it really matters if you see one before the other, but um, I mean, if you're watching this and you... and you know, it's before the second one's come out on Shudder, spend some of your time watching the first one. And that one is also long. So this one's basically about four and a half hours, which I think is a little bit longer than the first one, which whatever, you know, I'm fine with that. Uh, I would recommend kind of breaking it up into segments because it's, it is broken up into segments. It's got each year they talk about within the 80s, but then it's also topics. And uh, that leads me to my quick synopsis of it, basically doing things a little out of order. But uh, that basically, it's a documentary about the 80s and about horror films that came out in the 80s. And it's about going year by year and talking about some of those key films or interesting films and just talking about them in depth while getting parts of interviews from people within the industry and people who are, you know, with podcasts or uh, journalists having to do with horror, so they're kind of telling stories about these things, their relationship with those films, but also kind of some breakdown of, you know, themes in the films and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun, it's very insightful, and very nostalgic, and I think that's one of the big things that people love about it. So, it was written and directed by David A. Wiener, who also did the first In Search of Darkness, and is wor working in working on In Search of Tomorrow, which is basically a sci-fi version of In Search of Darkness. So if you're watching this and you also like sci-fi, you have that to look forward to, because I'm sure it'll be as good as this is, and this is good. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they start by hyping up the genre in the 80s with people talking about it in general and kind of throwing in some famous lines. So it's kind of a way to get you a little bit hyped up, get that nostalgia blood flowing, and it's fun. I like that setup. Oh, also real quick, at the very end of this, I'm going to go ahead and reveal what the segments are within the film over its four and a half hours. So if you don't want to know that, I'll prompt you before I go into that because it's, I'm not going to tell you, you know, what movies were brought up within the film or specific things that were really talked about. I'll just give you, like, the segments, like, their topics. So some people might not even want that, but I'll prompt you before I'm going to go into that. So anyway, good start to the film. Uh, the soundtrack is amazingly 80s, just like in the first film. So if you like the 80s, specifically if you were liking 80s music, you're going to like the soundtrack for this. It's a lot of fun. I am that way. I love the 80s. I love 80s horror. I love 80s music. So this really hits home for me. Love it. They dip into a lot of much older films uh, that they didn't in the first one, uh, which is wonderful because they actually have a setup in the very beginning where they're actually dipping into older than the 80s films because that's kind of a segment that's having to do with kind of influences on horror films in general, basically. So I like the way that they set things up that way. That is really, really cool. So it's not all about the 80s in that sense. It's a good mix of people talking as insiders to the industry and as fans. You know, some people who, you know, are industry folk, but they're also fans. And then some people who are basically ended up as fans first and then became like podcasters or journalists or whatever. So I like that aspect of it. Uh, it yields insight and analysis, but also reactions and memories that end up being tied to the films. And I think that's a lot of where the the nostalgia gets upped even further, is these people kind of having their memories and thoughts about these films tied to the first time they saw them, or the many times that they saw them, and then you as a viewer kind of connecting as well and being like, oh, I remember the first time I saw that, or this person's experience was pretty similar to mine. Like, those things are just, yeah, it's awesome. And for that reason, I really do think that this film has a lot of rewatch value, maybe not like immediately uh, because it is so long, but you know, maybe every year you sit down and watch it and the first one. 
technically done very well uh, in the intercutting of so many film clips with the interviews keeps you extremely engaged. You don't get bored visually. That's the wonderful thing. It's not just showing someone just sitting there talking like I do with my videos. Um, it's way more engaging than that. And uh, yeah, their intercutting of film clips moves at such a good pace with the interviews that yeah, you just stay engaged even though it's very long. Now, I didn't sit down and watch this all in one shot because like I'm saying, I would recommend, you know, chopping it up. But if you have like four and a half hours and nothing to do, sure, run through the whole thing. I personally think it's good to kind of chop it up into pieces and savor it because it's very easy to watch it that way since it is broken into segments. So what's real nice is when they talk about movies with big twists, they don't talk about the actual big twist or show it. They'll kind of like some of the times what they end up doing is they'll play a portion of the end of the film going right up to the point where it would start to reveal that big twist and then they cut it off there and they intentionally don't talk about what that big twist is but they say that oh and then the ending or the big twist in the ending and then they drop it so I like that because not everyone who sees this will have seen every single film and that leads me to my next big thing about this one of the other reasons I love the first one and this one is it gave me a lot of films to add to my list to get to because there were definitely films that showed up there that I wasn't I was either not aware of or I was aware of but it had been a long time and I totally forgot about and I was like oh yeah I need to put that on my list to watch so um literally while I was watching the movie I had my phone I was taking notes on my phone but I also had up my Netflix DVD queue so I could go and add things in now the problem with that is that I'm already maxed out on that so I had to go through and nix the non-horror films that I kind of put in there for my wife she won't remember that they were in there. <laughs> so I had to nix those and then add all these new ones. So just saying, it gave me a lot of extra stuff to check out. So that's basically all I have to say about it. Um, I will give you my overall star uh, rating on this and everything. And then, and then I will, um, then I'll give you the segments, just a quick rundown of those. So uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give this four and a half stars. It's a very good documentary it is wonderful I do think it's a bit too long um, but honestly like I said it's kind of broken up in the segments so that you can just you know do that so um, it's just too long to like do it in one sitting when some people may really want to do that but I know some people have really uh, frowned about the pricing of the physical media for it when they did their Kickstarter because I think it was like 60 bucks or something like that but it also came with a bunch of other stuff but what you need to consider is it's basically the length of like three movies. So just understand that. All right, so now I'm going to get to the segments. So if you don't want to know this, sign off right now, but do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button. Um, that is your best way to repay me for if you like this video or any video I've ever done. And also hit the notification bell button. I would appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so to get to the segments, I'm just going to quick go over them. I'm not really going to explain them, though. Because I don't want to spoil anything, really. These are segments in order that they appear in the film. Demon Seeds, classic horror influences. Uh, cinema horror Italiano, Giallo in the 80s Italian Invasion. That was my favorite. Method to the Madness, the craft of horror acting. Nancy Allen on Nancy Allen. Children in Horror, the good, the bad, and the vulnerable. Tom Savini on Tom Savini. Fiendishly Funny, Comedy in 80s Horror, Linnea Quigley on Linnea Quigley, Li uh, Live Through the, or, oh, jeez, sorry, Live Through This, Anti-Heroes and the Horror Avatar, 8-Bit Adventures, Classic Horror Video Games, Robert England on Robert England, Left Hanging, Unmade Horror Passion Projects, that was particularly interesting, I wish it was a bit longer though, I wish there was more to that one. Uh, famous Last Words, which is, you know, a wrap-up, basically. You can probably figure that one out. And then, obviously, they have a segment for each year of the 80s going from 1980 to 1989. So, that is it. Hopefully, uh, everyone checks this out. I really, really highly recommend it, especially if you're into horror documentaries, especially if you're into 80s horror, especially if you're into feeling nostalgic about 80s horror. Maybe these are films that you saw as a kid and you just want to get those feels back 
Or maybe, like I was looking for, you want new ideas for older horror films that you haven't seen yet and you need to put on your watch list, which my watch list is like insanely long. <laughs> I, I have a lot to work through. But I really appreciate you checking this out. Like I said, please hit the subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell. Uh, I really do appreciate that. But thanks for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.